You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, Jenna Conaway stops by to talk about the upcoming Hospice of Guernsey 4th Annual Flamingo Run. And OSU Extension's Christine Gelly joins me for two segments. We're going to talk about fescue fungus and we'll make some refreshing treats. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to another brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. If you haven't been to downtown Cambridge for a while, come on down, man. It's great. Check it out. Jenna Conway is the Outreach Coordinator for Hospice of Guernsey, and she joins me in the studio right now, and she brought a special guest. I did. I good brought a friend. Yeah. yeah. We haven't named this one yet, have we? No, we haven't. You have any good names? Frank. I like it. Frank the Flamingo. Frank the Flamingo. Okay. Go and ahead. you brought Frank the Flamingo for a reason. I did. We have our fourth annual Flamingo 5K coming up here shortly. It's going to be Saturday, July 29th at 8 a.m. starting in Cambridge City Park. Okay. And what's it all about? Well, how do the flamingos fit in? Sure. Well, we've worked with flamingos for a long time. We always do the flamingo flockings. You'll see them in people's yards. Oh, it's yeah. like a happy birthday or happy anniversary. And, and that's pretty cool. They are. They're fun. So people know that we're associated with flamingos. So we started this race four years ago and we lined the entire course with the flamingos. So that's people, a lot of flamingos. Yeah, how many is. flamingos do you have, I Jenna? think we have over a hundred flamingos. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we have a storage unit for that. You know, that's just something <laughs> you would not normally think about, you know, but yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. So they'll be running or walking and they'll have the flamingos mm -hmm. there to greet them and keep them yeah. company. Yes, to guide them along the way. Wow. You also have a, uh, a one mile memorial walk and I wanted to touch on that a little bit. What's we that do. about? We do. And you can do a memorial walk or run in any way you want, but we do have the one, one mile memorial walk. And a lot of people like to walk or run in memory of someone that they've lost. It's just kind of a nice tangible thing that you can do to remember someone. Um, and we have a lot of folks that come out and do that and they'll write on their bibs the name of the person they're running or walking that would be pretty of. special it is special yeah and a lot of times they come out in a big group as a family and do it well and so the great really thing nice. is is you can you can talk to uh, other folks who are participating in the memorial walk and, mm -hmm. and really strike up a bond with them yeah you can and it lets you know you're not alone other people are going through the same thing and have those same feelings so so how is the uh, the day itself going to shake out when will sure. registration start and all that? So registration starts at 7 a.m. Um, and if you've pre-registered, you can pick up your packets early, actually. Okay. You can pick up your packets on Wednesday or Thursday of that week, so the 26th and 27th at the hospice office. Okay. Or you can pick them up that morning um, at the Cambridge City Park. Um, we'll be in Pavilion 1, which is on the corner of Edgeworth and North 8th Street. Okay. Um, so we'll get those at 7 a.m. all the way up until just a few minutes before 8, and then at 8 o'clock we'll start the run. Okay, sounds cool. I hear uh, folks uh, have a tendency sometimes to dress up. They do. We started that <laughs> last year and it was so much fun. Um, folks dress up like a flamingo or they wear all the pink that they can and we do a couple best dressed awards. Um, and they're really nice medals. They have rhinestones on them and feathers and they're just really fun. I'd like to see those. We should. Yeah. You're in the process of I'm making, making all that those stuff right, right now. now yeah, we're crafting you? those as we speak. What about the Golden Flamingo Trophy? That is something new this year, and we offered that for either the school or school team or the business that brings the most people to the race. So if you've got a big group of people you're bringing, you might get a Golden Flamingo Trophy. And it is, it's one of these guys. Okay, but it's gold, golden. But it's golden. Okay. And it's sparkly and Wow. Really nice. You can take yeah. that home and be proud of that. You can. Put yeah. it in a nobody case. else. Nobody else has a golden flamingo. No, I bet they don't. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now, you welcome, or you probably encourage pre-registration. But mm -hmm. folks can register on the day of the yep, event. Yep, they can register the day of. If you pre-register, it's twenty dollars. If you register the day of, it's twenty-five. Okay, no cost involved, or is there? So yep. cost, cost is yep. involved, okay. Mm -hmm. um, $20 pre-registered, $25 the day of. And what do the proceeds go to? Uh, proceeds go to um, patient care and bereavement support for Hospice of Guernsey patients. And let's go ahead and talk about Hospice of Guernsey. Sure. What's it about? Sure. We care for terminally ill patients and we care for their families, really, um, in Guernsey, Noble, and Western Belmont counties. Um, and we work as a team because there are so many needs that our patients have and that those families have. Um, we really have to work as a team to try and meet all those needs. So we have our medical director, we've got all of our nurses, um, pastoral services, um, art therapy, music therapy, reflexology, social wow. workers, There's and bereavement lot. support. And our volunteers who are wonderful. They'll, they can go in the home and relieve that caregiver for a little while so they can run out to the grocery or they can just do a little self-care 
you know. There's always a need for volunteers. There are. Right? There's always a need for volunteers. Okay. You've got um, upcoming, upcoming training classes. We do. I know we're going to have one in September. Um, I don't know the exact date yet, but it'll probably be an evening class. So it'll be three days um, for two weeks each. And I, it, that's pro it's good to know for folks who say, I want to become involved, but I don't know how to do this. Yeah. Well, that's what the training class is yes, for, Yes, the right? training class is really very in-depth. It kind of goes over everything. And as a hospice volunteer, you don't have to do patient care. A lot of people aren't comfortable studying with patients. Mm -hmm. um, so you can help with fundraising. You can help in the office with just some paperwork that we need to get done. Um, there's so many ways that you can help as a volunteer. And so through the class, you get to learn about all that. And I would think it would be a very rewarding endeavor. It is. Our volunteers really, really enjoy what they do, I think. And they feel like they're helping. And they, they can see on our patients' faces that they're helping, on the caregivers' faces. It's it's really great. I know, you know, personally, our family's had experience with Hospice of Guernsey. And it's, you, you folks are wonderful. I mean, it does it does provide so much even uh, allevi alleviating some of the stress that's involved with mm -hmm. end of life because it is very stressful. It is. It's stressful and it's scary and you don't always know what to expect and I think that's one of the big things that our nurses help with is letting family families know what's coming next, what to expect, how it's going to go, um, just so they're prepared and, and they're aware. Yeah, exactly. You guys do a great job. Thank you very much. But again, you can get involved, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be with ca patient care. Yeah. You have other positions available as well. Yep, there's all kinds of things that, that folks can do. We have some volunteers that help in the office weekly, and so they come in, they have a special day that they come in, they have a desk that they kind of set at, and they know what their job is, and that's what they do. So it's, it's really whatever you want to do. All right, fourth annual Flamingo Run is coming up July 29th, and uh, pre-register, get your packet early or register on the day of, but uh, you know, keep that Golden Flamingo Trophy in mind. Yes. You could be the proud owner of the Golden Flamingo you Trophy. <laughs> Jenna Conway, always a pleasure to see you Thank and thanks you for so what much. you guys do. Thank you. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. of the town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Bill Dixon finds and sells some unique items and hard to find local collectibles. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town, this is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home and personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the classic difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back, and thanks for watching Talk of the Town. And again, we hope you're having a great day today. We are. We always do. Always it's always fun. We're going to talk to Christine Kelly now from OSU Extension. Good. Hey, how you been? Great. Good. I know the last time we made that uh, wonderful parfait dessert, which, ooh, yeah, but we're going to do something um, with our hands mm -hmm. the next segment. But you're joining me right now to talk about what? Well, we're going to talk about fescue toxicosis. Which okay, a that's foreign. something I, I use that term every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what, what that is, is that? That is a condition that can be caused 
by an endophytic fungus. Now, endophytic means inside. So okay. this is a fungus that lives inside tall fescue grass, specifically the variety that's con called Kentucky 31. Okay. That variety is the most commonly used variety for both lawns yeah. and also pasture yeah. systems. Yeah. So this is a grass that's prevalent. It's one that we use for grazing all different kinds of livestock, and it's one that we depend on a lot for our management. So this fungus is probably out there in people's pastures. Now it's not inherently bad. Okay. This fungus actually helps the grass live. Uh, it helps it through periods of drought, periods of too high moisture. Okay. Uh, it helps contribute So it's a regulator nutrients. fungus, kind of. Yeah. The fungus and the grass have a mutually beneficial relationship. But that relationship's not necessarily beneficial for the people, or well, not the people, but the livestock, livestock that are grazing it. Is this something that has just come to the forefront recently? Is it, it uh, that you've just developed the knowledge of this recently, or is this no, something that's been there actually, for a while? No, actually, this has been a known fact for almost 50 years now, but it wasn't up until the discovery of this fungus that the realization came that there are these negative symptoms people were observing with livestock grazing Such as. this grass. Such as? Uh, too high body temperature, retaining winter hair coats, mm. not eating enough, not drinking enough, spending all day long in the shade or lounging in the pond. Hmm. And then some of the harder to detect things that could be attributed to many factors, not realizing it was the grass, like difficulty with reproduction, difficulty getting pregnant, difficulty maintaining pregnancy, and even in extreme cases, loss of tails or hooves. Really? Yes. I mean, if you have livestock, then this is a grave concern. Well, I wouldn't say grave. Okay. We don't want to scare people okay. too okay. badly because there's lots of ways Something you can Something to be aware this. of then. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. if you're observing these types of symptoms, it's time to check out the fescue in your pasture. If all your livestock have to consume is that tall fescue, mm -hmm. it's likely that you'll have some or multiple of these symptoms, maybe one, maybe more than one, present in your herd. And this is across cattle and sheep, mostly could be other livestock, but particularly cattle and sheep. Um, there are concerns for horses, specifically pregnant mares in the last trimester of pregnancy. If you have a, a mix of grazing materials, is the, the problem then less prevalent? Definitely. Okay. If you have a mix of tall fescue with other grasses mm -hmm. or other clovers, mm -hmm. even if it's a 70% fescue, 30% clover, mm -hmm. that will be enough to combat most of the okay. problems. You may see a little bit of reduction in rate of gain or reproductive success, but that's going to buffer you from those severe symptoms. Okay. I understand. And those symptoms are caused by restricted blood vessels. That's what's happening that's in that relationship. That's what the fungus attacks, or that's what the fungus does? Yes. Okay. Consuming that fungus restricts the blood vessels, reduces the flow of blood to the extremities. How does someone test the, uh, the fescue? What do they do? It has to be done in a laboratory. Okay. So, unless you have renovated your pasture with a endophyte-free or a novel endophyte, variety. And the word for today is endophyte, by the way. That's we right. just wanted to say that. Then you probably have a concern okay. for this endophyte in your fescue. We have uh, varieties now that are available without the endophyte at all. Oh, really? They've, they've created those? They have created those. Um, it has to do with a, a process of treating the seed. The endophyte is carried over to the next season in the seed. So you can treat the seed to remove the fungus. Do we have a lot of fescue here? In our Lots. area, it's Lots. the most prevalently grazed grass in, in, in our region. And lawns as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fescue there as well. Yes. Hmm. Um, you can also get novel endophyte varieties, and what that means is it has an endophyte in it that helps the grass persist but doesn't harm livestock. So there are other varieties out there, but unless you've made the effort to put those varieties in your pasture, there's probably some concern about this endophyte being in your. Pasture. This is where science come in, comes into play because the average person would never know this, right? Right. Now, there has been quite a bit of attention t uh, drawn to it over time. Uh, usually, we see peaks of when we're seeing these symptoms appear, which usually happens during a drought year because during a drought, 
that endophyte becomes more concentrated mm. in the leaves and, okay. and in the seed heads as well. Um, and then you're likely to see more symptoms. That partially has to do with that the other species that thrive in the pasture mm -hmm. may decline during that drought. So all there is left to eat is the tall fescue. So that dilution factor isn't there anymore. So if you're noticing any of these symptoms that Christine mentioned in your, your livestock, you know, this could be the, the direct problem. It could, and if you're not sure, you're not sure if you even have tall fescue in your pasture, you're noticing some of these things that just aren't quite right, feel free to call the extension office. We can talk about it some more. We can do some grass identification. If you know you have a problem, we can talk about ways to mitigate it without doing too crazy of a renovation for your pasture. Okay, and that's why the uh, extension office is there. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, you're going to stick around, and uh, we're going to set up the uh, the roller cart kind of thing, and we're all going to be behind it, and we're going to we're going to do something constructive when we come back, right? We are. We're going to talk about making sure that you and your livestock get enough water this summer. Back with more talk of the town and Christine Gellick right after this. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. The Old Country Law features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. And welcome to Christine's Kitchen. I just made that up. It sounds good. It does. It's good Christ to be back. Christine Gelly joins me again. As you see, we're going to prepare something here. And we have glasses and we have water and we have fruit. So what are we going to do? What do you think we're going to do? We're going to put the water and the fruit together in a glass. Yeah, it makes something delicious. It's called infusion, right? That's right. Yes. Okay. Now, this is like all the rage, infused waters. It is. And people yeah. pay good money for it already yeah. infused water. A lot of money in cases for it. Yeah. But you can do this at home really mm -hmm. easily. And you have all kinds of flavor combinations already in your refrigerator. Now, let's start off with a little quiz. How much water do you think an adult human is supposed to consume each day? Normal day. Uh, I, you asked me that question earlier, and I said 48 ounces. And you said that's not enough. That's right. How much? It's eight glasses, eight ounces each of water. I, it, and that sounds good, but I, I, can't, I have never done that, I don't think. How, how can you do that realistically? Realistically, let's break it down a little bit so okay. it's not so intimidating. So okay. you're right. Eight times eight is 64. Mm -hmm. 64 ounces of water is when an adult is supposed to drink each okay. day. Okay. Now that's a normal day. That's not, I went out and mowed the lawn, I walked around the fairgrounds, I rode in the tractor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a normal day. Okay. This is what your body needs. Okay. So, if we think about it in each eight ounce chunk, this okay. is an eight ounce bottle of water. Okay. 
every time you're thirsty, yeah. if you push yourself to drink the whole eight ounces, yeah. all yeah. you need is eight little water breaks yeah, like throughout the goals, day. It's it's not as uh, it's it's not as intimidating. intimidating to do it this way. That's right. Really, because you're taking smaller portions, not all at once. Now, for me, this is actually a little bit annoying. I'd prefer to have 16 ounces together. Well, yeah. And that's okay. my preference, okay. which is about what will fit yeah. in each of these cups. Yeah. You so say potato, I say potato. Okay? Whichever <laughs> way is more appealing for you. Okay. Breaking it down into smaller portions makes it seem a little less intimidating. Okay. And you'll read on all these fitness blogs and um, from people who are trying to lose weight or really be fit that they need to drink more water, more water, more okay. water. And they're right. The more you're pushing your body, the more you need to refuel it. Okay. However, if you're just going about your normal day, okay. you don't really need to drink three gallons of water a day. Right. Now, if you were a cow. Or a camel. Or a camel, it would be a different situation. Okay. In general, livestock need to drink one to two gallons for every hundred pounds of body weight. Okay. okay. So that's important also for our folks who are caring for animals out in okay. the field, trying to keep access to clean, fresh, chilled water and it doesn't have to be cold okay. but keeping it below body temperature will encourage the animals to take more of it as part okay. of their daily consumption and it will also reduce uh, the growth of bacteria and algae okay let's so that's important let's do our know. infusing here what are we gonna do well let's go ahead I'm getting ahead of myself let's see we have four different flavor combinations okay. that we're gonna try out and you can use Anything you want, really? Anything you want. Yeah. The, the four combinations that I have here together are a berry, cherry and peach, mm. a citrus, and mm -hmm. a melon blend. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do cucumber melon, mm. water. This mm -hmm. is a cantaloupe watermelon. Mm -hmm. We have lemon, orange, lime. You then find of course those, our peach and those cherry. combinations in a lot of resorts or things mm -hmm. like that. They'll have it in a, in a glass right. jar. And then this is just an assorted berry mix. Okay. You can freeze all of these ahead of time sure. and then you need less ice cubes. Okay. So what do we do? Just add these just add, into the cup. Right? Just put them yep. in there. So we're going to make four different flavor combos. Okay. Here we've got strawberries, black raspberry. This is a little reminiscent of last time. Yeah. We like our berries. We do like our berries. Let's just Okay, see we've how got this three minutes. Up. So that's going to be one. Ooh. Oh, look, it's already Ooh. getting that nice yeah. little berry color in it, too. But okay. doing it this way makes it seem a little bit more like a treat. Okay. Rather so than a So you want me to go ahead and spoon some? Sure. How about let's How make... How about you spoon those and I will do okay. How about the citrus Here, I'll one. go down here so I don't cross over you so there. So you've got a couple like a, slices like of Like a good orange, TV host would do. Don't a couple slices of lemon. Okay. And a few of lime. Now, the longer okay. you let these fruits sit okay. in with the water, the more intense the flavor will be. And yeah. you can reuse your yeah. fruit multiple times. And that makes sense. Let me go ahead and fill they this one. They do have this water bottles. Melon with the infuser insert in them. Oh, they so do. So some people don't find these chunks appealing in their glass. They don't want things floating around. You can use those infuser inserts to help keep the fruit contained. This, this would be very refreshing. You know, if you want something refreshing, this is, this is it. It's like natural stuff. Oh, you know? it sure is. So which one would you like to try? I, I, I don't know. Um, I'd like to try the I think I'm going to try the peach cherry. The peach cherry. Because I can, you know, the, the citrus is pretty common, uh, but I've never done the peach. Now, I know the berry is going to taste pretty good. And, and again, the longer you let this infuse, the more that's going to take on the flavor. That's right. right? I like to add the straw that helps me keep it from okay. uh, spilling on myself. Yeah. And also, I use it these a lot at home touch. because I do spill a lot. So, so I've got straws. Cheers. Cheers. All right, Barry, let's see it. It has a little flavor right now, but I would say the berries are probably going to be, or the citrus, going to be more instantly recognizable because they dissipate There's as much. There's more prevalent juice. Yeah. That's right. Now, yeah. when, don't you think your coworkers would be jealous if they saw you drinking this all day? Sure. As opposed to drinking little you know, it's just shows, boring bottles just of water? It just shows sophistication. <laughs> is what it, and if you drink it like this with the pinky out, they really know that. Well, I think that using uh, strategies like infusing your water, mm -hmm. jazzing it up, or breaking it down mm -hmm. into smaller portions mm -hmm. makes it seem more of a treat and less of a chore. This would I encourage you to drink more water, mm -hmm. okay? But, but again, if you break it down into the smaller bottles, it doesn't seem so daunting of a task, right. really. So here we are, midsummer. Want to remind everybody to make sure that you drink your water and don't forget about your animals too. That's right.
That's right. And Adam and I will come to your house and make this if you'd like us to. Special service we provide. Yes, we do. Okay. Christine Gelly from OSU Extension. Great information. And uh, again, try this at home. Very easy and very economical. That's right. Doesn't cost you at all. And refreshing. And that's what it's all about on these hot dog days of summer. Okay. Hey, back to wrap it up right after this. Cheers. Cheers. Right back with more Talk of the Town. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. Hey, that's going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so very much for watching, and thanks again to our special guests, Jenna Conway and Christine Gelly. Yeah, Adam said it looks like I need a yacht hat. I'm ready for the cruise. But uh, Christine Gelly, this was very, very refreshing, and you can make this at home, okay? Hey, local programming available on our YouTube channel includes uh, um, Talk of the Town, Discover Cambridge, plus look for upcoming fall sports, meet the candidates, and a whole lot more. And that address is YRP TV on YouTube, right? For producer, director Adam Green and Perry Broadich, we'll see you next time on Talk of the Tent. Sitting for three or more hours a day can cut off two years of a person's life. Obesity causes 44% of diabetes. Obesity in teens and children has nearly tripled in 30 years. Lack of exercise is as deadly as smoking. Get going, Guernsey! For more information about Healthy Guernsey, call Southeastern Med's Wellness Resource Department at 435-2946 or visit seorMC.org. The Old Country Loft features country curtains in stock or order that special design to customize your decor. You can also pick out braided or decorative woven rug from her large selection in stock. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. 
At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. 